Hello and welcome to Colors of India, the show that brings you up to speed with all that's happening in the world of art, music and culture. And before we go ahead with the stories, let's take a quick look at the main ones. Exploring International Ancient Arts Women and Divinity And then Hindustani Khayal Gaiki the International Ancient Arts Festival was one of a kind with various artists performing on two consecutive days. And today we bring you a never before seen musical extravaganza. The International Ancient Arts Festival was a two-day multi-arts event at Kamani Auditorium. The festival focused on the therapeutic benefits of music and dance and how they help restoring individual health and harmony. Uh, see, I'm a promoter of traditional arts. And uh, I'm also a performer, I do Odyssey. And uh, when it came to curating a festival, I, in my, during my research I found that most of these traditional arts have therapeutic uh, effects. And uh, science is saying that now. And most of these uh, techniques, therapy techniques, are really based on uh, a very solid research on the effect of music, dance and allied arts on the body and mind. The second day of the festival was a musical delight. In an international collaboration, artists like Wang Fai from China and Bahman Panahi from Iran shared the stage with India's Johar Ali from the Patiala Gharana of Rampur. They were accompanied by Fakhruddin Ghafani on the Tumbak and Akhtar Hassan from the Fakhrabad Garana on the Tabla. Uh, I want to introduce uh, Indian audience uh, Indian people, my uh, music instrument, Gu Qin. Uh, Gu Qin is the oldest stringed instrument uh, with 3,000 years history. It's the oldest uh, stringed instrument in China. It was a pleasant first for many in the audience as they witnessed the playing of two ancient musical instruments. Guchen, for instance, is an ancient seven-stringed Chinese instrument and the tar is a highly popular Iranian one. Johar Ali, on his violin, matched the music and the tunes of these instruments. The 
performance was also a unique blend of various musical genres, to say the least. This festival का मकसद ये है कि लोग ये देखें कि ancient art में कितनी बारीकियां हैं, इसमें कितनी उसमें purity है, और हमारा संगीत जो विदेशों के ancient संगीत है, वो जाके एक साथ जाके वो जुड़ जाता है। तो इसका मकसद ये है कि लोगों को इसके पीछे जागरूक करना और उसकी value को समझाना। what began as solo renditions on each instrument soon gave way to a jugal bandi of sorts creating new music which of course appealed to everyone. A jugal bandi of tar guchan and violin. The evening is sure marked as memorable on my calendar. Now, in the past, we've taken you to art exhibitions of the experimental kind. This time, we're traveling further down history to show you what early man's paintings must have looked like. Speaking stones was the name given for Minakshi Dube Patak's exhibition of rock paintings. Vakankar, who is known as the father of Indian rock art. She is also passionate about ancient rock art seen in India and the world over. Through her exhibition, she tried to replicate these age-old art forms, making an understanding of them more accessible to the public. Rock art is one thing which basically is our uh, looking glass, our, our uh, prism into what human civilization was in those ancient times and how it began to evolve. It's a very important aspect of our civilization. And therefore, no, not everyone can go to see those rock arts, either in Beam Batika or to Ladakh, etc. So uh, it's a commendable idea to actually paint those rock carvings and the paintings and make them a mobile, bring them across to the art galleries. Rock art is commonly found in red sandstone ridge Central India, as this was the then popular medium used for art. Most of these paintings depict human figures involved in everyday activities like hunting, cultivating and horse riding. Red and white were the common colours and the use of symbols were rare. For us, these paintings are decoration, but for early men, their paintings are not a part of decoration. For these paintings are having their uh, own uh, meaning, purpose. Paintings are related with uh, early men's ceremonies, rituals. So I want people, they should respect rock art. This is our heritage, our tradition, our culture. Come forward, respect and save and appreciate. These rock art were related to ceremonies and sacred ancient rituals. And Minakshi, in her replication, used canvas with sand, wood, handmade paper and boj patras. To make these paintings, 
appear like their originals. First of all, the concept has speaking stones. It really intrigued me that I, I really wanted to see that what it is kind. And when I entered this gallery, I really felt that there are certain things in the painting which really is so striking that it's truly living up to the word speaking stones. Because I think from the long forgotten eras, certain parts which, have, which Minakshi ji has put forward in painting and in different ideas, it's really very good you know very different minakshi works towards making rock art popular and encourages people to preserve it she also holds workshops for children to motivate them and to teach them the value of their heritage minakshi has in fact bought land rich in rock art in an attempt to preserve it commendable work indeed it's here that we take a tiny break on Colors of India. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Coming up, women and divinity. Also on the show, Hindustani Khayal singing. Welcome back. We've often heard people talk about feminism. Today we bring you this same thought highlighted through a multimedia dance theatre production. Oh God, the night is passing away. Tell me that the night is well spent. Tell me that we are never separated because you're alive in my heart. As director Sohila Kapoor's words reverberated, oh, a dance theater, began with the song of Rabia, the Iraqi mystic and the first woman Sufi saint responsible for introducing the concept of divine love into Sufism. Oh God, another night is passing away, another day is rising. Tell me that I have spent the night well, so I can be at peace, or that I have wasted it, so that I can mourn for what is lost. We talk about women's struggle in the arena of spirituality. They've had to fight for their rights even there. To live like an ascetic, ascetic they've had to fight because they were considered chattel in a man's possession. <laughs> A deeply meditative piece, O represents the feminine principle, the circle of emotions, the limitless universe and the divine absolute. It was the story of two women, Rabia the Sufi from Iraq and Karekal Ammiyar, the Shaivite from Tamil Nadu. Both chose a life of struggle and were ultimately revered by the very men who subjugated them. I 
practically everywhere all over india you have had as much role of women in the bhakti movement as the men have so uh, the play brings to light once again what we have forgotten and that's very very important that we should remember that we have had these wonderful women who have played such a such a, a great role in building up this bhakti movement in india There is a connection between life and the divine. Similarly, Rabia and Ammiyar were opposites in nature but battled similar obstacles to attain their spiritual goals. While Rabia shunted worldly elements, Ammiyar lived in domestic bliss until her husband left her. The most precious fruit your husband had given you. What else did you offer him? Yourself too. <laughs> She entered into an intense tantric meditation praying for that ultimately unwomanly desire ugliness Bordeloy adeptly switched from the spirits like Rabia to the sensuous Ameyar as an artist to as a dancer to think of two different vocabularies as an actor to think of two different voices and to be there for that span of time um it's an experience bordeloy and gail schumann used puppetry multimedia visuals and the saints own poetry as their background score turning the performance into a beautiful breathtaking experience that he should ask who is your lord an expression can tell a thousand things and when we can speak with the body who needs words hold on to that thought while we take a small break up next an enriching art exhibition and hindustani khayal singing Welcome back. Sometimes people are united by passion, and Mohana, a group art exhibition at Lalit Kala Academy, was example for just that. means confluence or coming together and this art exhibition was just that watercolor remains artist rajat bandopadhyay's forte and he has captured the various moods of nature the landscapes and environments through his works keeping the paper white is an art that's the toughest job as far as the art is concerned that is the main reason people i mean most of the artists switch over from watercolor to any other medium watercolor on canvas as well as acrylic you'll get to see some figurative but based on nature if you see more or less it's based on nature Rajat serene white paintings are complemented with a contrasting shade of huge pride paintings that instantly catch your eye. Artist Radhika Surana's Ragamala series was an attempt to bring the three aspects of art, music, visual arts and poetry on the same platform and radhika's muse are the chump of flowers i 
thought maybe if I use color, that is the only strong point which can actually transform the feeling of the rag, the emotion which is there in a rag. As I tried with rag malhar, which is again a, a rag which is sung in the monsoons. So I tried to use the colors, you know, feel the mood of the monsoon season and paint it. Artist Kavita Ayengar interpreted elements like water, earth and wind. She also experimented with form and leaves of various colours. With conflict everywhere, one seeks harmony within and artist Sumita Kathoria portrayed this inherent debate through abstract renditions. While Jaya was influenced by the divine feeling of form and colour aimed to unfold divinity through the depiction of tranquility in her art. The subjects were really different and yet in more ways than one, Mohana speaks of diverse unity. Speaking of which, the International Ancient Arts Festival had a spectacular beginning which you saw earlier, but their closing ceremony was just as gala. The International Ancient Arts Festival, a therapeutic insight into the benefits of music and dance. It had as its closure performance classical Indian tunes by Rajan and Sajan Mishra. started in a small way in 2010 and then the response became a little bit better last time you know the press responded very well to us but we were not able to get the audiences in because you don't get this kind of positive vibe from everybody everybody is just so charged up you know and um, uh, I think I've got a we've got a very good response this year Rajan and Sajan are brothers known for singing in the Kheal style of Indian classical music they are a part of a 300-year-old lineage of Kheal singing of the Banaras Gharana. My message is that today in the whole Hindustan, if there is a group प्रेजेंटेशन हो तो जिससे बाहरी दुनिया के भी जो लोग हैं जो संगीत से जुड़े हुए हैं वो हमारे यहाँ आए हम उनके यहाँ जाएं और म्यूजिकल एक्सचेंज हो तो उससे क्या है कि एक हार्मनी बनती है और म्यूजिक एक ऐसा सब्जेक्ट है जिसके द्वारा बहुत ही प्यार और भाईचारा पूरे विश्व में बढ़ाया जा सकता है They began with the Barakhyal in Rag Abogi Kangra. As the Barakhyal involves stretching the song, they also incorporated selected short pieces in different ragas.
accompanying their vocals were Shiv Shankar Roy on tabla, Pandit Dharmnath Mishra on the harmonium and Swaran Veej and Renu Gupta on the tanpura. I like khyal singing but I'm really not a fan of the bada khyal which they were singing because it stretches out too much for me. But in khyal singing you definitely hear the ups and downs so you can see they went from the lowest note to the highest note in like the blink of an eye. So you know that's their speciality so it's, it's, it's mesmerizing you know you can just get lost in it. That's good. <laughs> The rhythms of their music touched mirrored levels, sometimes following a slow pace, then rising to a high tempo, all in split seconds. The speciality of Banaras Gharana was completely evident here. If music has the power to heal, then that was the place to be in. Sadly, it's time for us to wrap, but do remember to stay in touch with us through our Facebook page. And until we meet again next week, stay safe, be happy and keep smiling.